My name is John Kelly, we're farming here in Wicklow with my wife and five kids. We milk around 230 cows. Uh, we have a mixture of uh, forestry, some sort of parkland, river, and the rest is nearly all permanent grass. With, with some forestry which is uh, oak and beech, and would have been planted with like a larch as well as a cover, with other forestry which is, is, is just oak and larch, um, that's the bits we see here and up in the hill. Uh, we also have some just spruce planted. We've planted in some of the higher ground. We've planted some on banks here, which are just sandy banks, which wouldn't have grown a great amount of grass. Traditionally, cows would have pulled holes and stuff in them. So we like the aesthetics, we like the cover it gives. It uh, gives a bit of biodiversity that grassland doesn't give and can't give. So it, it, and it adds a bit of character to the farm as well. When you come to a farm like this, we have we've lots of nice areas of forestry and areas of bird, bird crops and areas of farm walks. And there's a real dichotomy there. We also have intensive areas. We're grazing quite intensively, for want of a better word. We are, we have some mixed species and we're doing different things and cutting back nitrogen, but like it is what it is. We are intensive dairy farmers. So within that system, that's the difficult bit, isn't it? It's to, is it just on the edges? Is that where it's all, always going to be, Ray? Or can we find little bits like this that join up forestry from one plot to the other? Is that as good as we're going to get? It's, it's a beautiful farm, um, but behind the beauty of the parkland and stuff, there's a, there's a hard reality there that I have bills. There's a succession thing. I need to pay a lot of money. I have a family to support and it's, it's trying to do what's right for the environment and keep our family safe. It's that balance and it's not, it is not simple. It's hard to manage uh, forestry in that system. They definitely uh, provide habitats that we, you, you can't do on grassland, even with mixed species. By nature, they're a lot more quiet and reclusive and just a different species for different types of wildlife. On the commercial side, we have we use the thinnings, we have a wood chip boiler and we actually use the thinnings for the own heating of the farm and the houses. So that's a direct benefit. Um, there's something nice about growing your own forestry and having nearly a, an inclusive system there that you can supply your own heat. There's also sort of a, a leisure function too. We've walks through the woods and my dad has, through some of the mature forestry, he's made walks to make it more easy for people to walk through. And, and quality of life. Just quality of life and there's something nice about trees. Um, you hear the birds nesting in the evenings and um, yeah, it, it, it gives the farm character and uh, yeah, we, like we do love the trees. We love where we live, we love the mountains, we love the trees, we love the river. It just adds to that. You know? The way I would look at agriculture and forestry, it, it all has to it's fine to pick out examples of people who are doing something uniquely different and it works really well for them, but if you're looking to make policy that goes across the whole of agriculture, it needs to be a bit broader and a bit more encompassing. Um, Technicality-wise, um, I suppose guys worry about their BPS and stuff like that, um, which is one thing. The retrospective nature of some rules have been damaging for forestry. We would have found that. Um, my dad would have entered FEPS and then when he was out of reps that money would have stopped and so technicality and, and bureaucracy like that can do a lot of damage to people who are inclined to do the right thing and um, yeah I think they need to look at that. I think f on a whole farmers we, and landowners we have a responsibility to balance looking after ourselves to do what's right for the environment and I think forestry definitely has a role in that. Um, I would question anybody who say they have nowhere in their land that they can't plant some trees or do a bit of forestry. If you have to farm the very last acre of your farm, there's something wrong there within that system. Whether uh, forestry is going to provide the financial solution to that, um, maybe not, but there's definitely an environmental benefit to it, a social benefit to it, and a lifestyle benefit to planting forestry on your farm.